Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be about one of the largest and most cruel massacres in history. And the craziest part or the scariest thing about this massacre is it appears as if history is beginning to repeat itself. Now, if you're not sure what I'm referring to, I'm referring to none other than the Parsley Massacre. Beginning October the 2nd, 1937, more than 35,000 Haitians lost their lives to the hands of Dominican soldiers and citizens, according to the reports. Now, many other reports state that the death toll was probably well over 200,000. I mean, 35,000 is the number given because this is the recorded or documented number. Now, but we all know, especially if you're one of my chatters who watch my other videos, then we know that record keeping at this time, when it comes to massacres, it was pretty horrible. I mean, many lives, they were not recorded. I mean, some due to carelessness and others due to good old fashioned cover up. So let's uncover a few things today. I mean, let's uncover it because it's getting pretty real in the Dominican Republic. And history seems to be repeating itself. I mean, things are getting so real. If you're a dark-skinned American, authorities are warning you to stay away from the Dominican Republic at this time. So, with that being said, let's chat. Before we discuss the Parsley Massacre, we must discuss the monster behind it. Now, if you're offended by me referring to him as that, I mean, please drop your comments below. But regardless, I said what I said. And you will find out why I said it if you watch the full video and just hear me out. Now, but anyway, Raphael Trujillo, he was born October the 24th, 1891. Now, Trujillo, he entered the Dominican army around the age of 27 in 1918. And he was trained by none other than the United States Marines. Now, Trujillo, he rose from lieutenant to commanding colonel of the National Police during his time with them from 1919 to 1925. And Trujillo rose to general in 1927. And around 1930, he seized power from President Horatio Vasquez, and he became one of the worst dictators in history. Now, Trujillo, he ensured his absolute control by assassinating political opponents and placing family members in office. And Trujillo, he served as president from 1930 to 1938 and again from 1942 to 1952. And nearing 1961, Trujillo, he began to lose the support of his army, which led to his assassination on May the 30th, 1961. So now that we have a little backstory about Trujillo, let's get back to the story. Now, there has been no single reason identified as to why the Parsley Massacre took place, but there are several theories. Now, these theories, such as rising tensions when it comes to food, jobs, and territories, they were used as reasons for the massacre. I mean, theories like these are believed because around the time of the massacre, I mean, although the Dominican took up about two-thirds of the island, Trujillo, he wanted the entire island. I mean, not only did he want the entire territory, he also wanted control of all exports and jobs. And after the Great Depression, resentment grew and grew for the Haitians who crossed the border to work in the sugar plantations. And leading up to the massacre... Now, it is said that Trujillo, he visited the border region and became enraged once he saw all the Haitians working and living within the area. Now, Trujillo, he vowed to do something about it, according to the reports. 
And amongst all of this, I mean, as if tensions weren't high enough, rumors began to circulate stating that the Haitians were stealing cattle and crops from the Dominican borderline residents. Now, as the tensions began to rise more and more, so did hunger within the region. And as tensions and hunger rose, so did hatred. Now, Trujillo, he used these tensions and circumstances to persuade the Dominican army and some citizens to rid the island of all Haitian people. And on October the 2nd, 1937, Trujillo, he made his intentions towards the Haitian community very clear during his short speech he gave during his celebration of honor in the province of Dajabon. Now, his intentions or orders is what sparked the beginning of the Parsley Massacre. And according to the reports, a report dated October the 6th, 1937, written by an American observer of the massacre. It was stated that most lives were taken near the northern part of the Haitian Dominican border. I mean, however... Some Haitians, they were rounded up before having their lives taken as far away as the citizen, as far as the city of Santiago, around 60 miles east of the border. Now, the observers stated that they watched as drunken Dominican rural police used cruel weapons such as clubs, machetes, knives and guns to take the lives of Haitian men, women and children. Now the Haitian men, they were hacked to death. Haitian women's lives were taken with three-pointed daggers. And the babies and small children, their lives was taken by them being tossed into the air and they landed on the soldiers' bayonets. Their bodies were then thrown on top of their mothers. And the officers, they were so cruel, they carried some parsley around to test the Dominican hood of their potential victims. So they basically made them pronounce the word parsley in its, you know, Spanish form. And this Spanish form was pronounced perio. Now, this was a word that Haitians had difficulty pronouncing. Heck, I, pro- I got a little difficulty pronouncing it myself. So, if they didn't pronounce it correctly, they lost their lives in the most horrible ways. And this is how the Parsley Massacre actually earned its name. I mean, the officers, they tried not to use guns during the massacre. And they did this so outsiders would believe that private citizens actually committed the killings. Their theory was that if guns weren't really used, the crimes couldn't be blamed on government forces. And now when it was all said and done, over 35,000 Haitian lives had been taken. And many of their remains were tossed into Massacre River. Now, Massacre River had already earned its name before the Parsley Massacre. The river was given this name after an earlier dispute with the Spanish and the French. And as I said earlier, it is believed that many more than 35,000 lives were lost. And this is believed because there was a lot of poor record keeping at this time. And a lot of good old fashioned cover up was taking place as well. I mean, the cover ups was so bad. The Haitian president at this time President Stenio Vincent, he prohibited public discussions about the massacre and he refused to allow the church to perform services for the deceased people. I mean, he simply just responded on October the 15th, 1937 with a statement. A statement which said, and I quote, with the hope that certain incidents which occurred in the northern frontier between Dominicans and Haitians would not be subject to exaggerated commentary contrary to harmony. It is declared that the good relationship between the, between Haiti and the Dominican Republic have not suffered 
any damage. And these are his statements in response to the massacre. And on January the 31st, 1938, in the indemnity agreement signed in Washington, D.C., the Dominican government, they recognized no responsibility for the massacre whatsoever. I mean, in fact, Trujillo and his people, they actually defended the massacre and their actions as a response to the mythical illegal migration of the Haitian people. Or in other words, they felt that their actions were justified because they considered the Haitians to be illegal immigrants, I mean, whether they were or not. And this brings us to what's going on today in the Dominican Republic. Now, between July and October of 2022, anywhere from 43,900 to 60,000 immigrants, mostly Haitian, they were expelled from the Dominican Republic by Dominican authorities. And over 108,000 Haitians were deported in 2022 alone. I mean, it's gotten so bad that many reports state that the treatment of the Haitians and darker skinned people has become inhumanely cruel and possibly even deadly. I mean, even America has begun to warn its citizens about going to the Dominican Republic at this time. I mean, United States officials within the Dominican Republic, they warn darker skinned Americans that they are at risk of being swept up in the country's crackdown of Haitian migrants. I mean, they call it a crackdown. But could it actually be history repeating itself? Well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. Please tell me your thoughts below. I mean, what do you think about Trujillo and the Parsley Massacre? I mean, what do you think about what's going on in the Dominican Republic today? I mean, do you feel as if history is beginning to repeat itself? I mean, tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video. Please share the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.